In 1949, the Kuomintang retreated from mainland China to Taiwan Island. Over 2 million refugees came with them. Most of them were national soldiers and their families. The newly installed government scrambled to find proper housing for all these people, eventually building 886 stark concrete structures all across the island. These were called military villages. The government never expected these people, the Wai Shenren as they came to be called, to actually stay in Taiwan for all that long. It was expected that these people would be called back into service once the Kuomintang made its move to retake the mainland. But over the decades, times changed. No movement to retake the mainland would ever come. Taiwan became a democracy, and the Kuomintang government itself became Taiwanized. Part of that Taiwanization process was an increased study and appreciation of the native Taiwanese people's backgrounds, the Hakka, Aboriginals, and the like. But in the 1990s, the government realized, with perhaps a little surprise, that part of the cultural experience of the Wai Shenren themselves, now 15% of the population, had to do with these military villages, which were now crumbling apart and were being torn down. Thus, the Taiwanese government embarked to preserve some of them. Recently, I visited one such site in the Santong area of New Taipei City. Its full name is Santong Air Force Military Kindred Village No. 1. My visit is the subject of today's video. An Introduction to Santong Kindred Village Santong Air Force Military Kindred Village No. 1 is located in the Santong area of New Taipei City. New Taipei City is Taiwan's most populated area with nearly 4 million people and entirely surrounds Taipei City proper. Being so large, it was recently upgraded to a special municipality directly under the control of the central government. There are six such areas in Taiwan. There are four similarly controlled areas on the mainland. Bonus points if you can say what they are without Googling it. Santong is a district within New Taipei City. Ever since the Japanese colonization period, the district's strategic location at the mouth of the Damsui River made its military bases a critical part of the defense strategy. If the PLA were to ever land on Taiwan's beaches, they would need to get through Santong and cross a nearby Taipei Bridge to reach the Taiwanese central government. The homes were built and arranged together in such a way that they could be easily defended from attack from the outside. There also seems to be some sort of air raid shelter here underground, but I never got a chance to visit it. And because incoming bomber planes would have to fly over the village to reach Taipei proper, the government installed six anti-aircraft guns on the ground. One such was placed in the center of the village plaza. Sadly, they're no longer around today. Life in Santong Village The majority of Santong Village's members were Air Force officers. Before the Taiwan retreat, they had previously been stationed at Sichuan Air Force Base. These Wai Shenren made up a small minority of the population of that, I mean, that community of only 9%. But since they all came from the same region, Sichuan, Hunan, and Hebei, a common culture helped them adjust to their new life on Taiwan. Other than the constant threat of military invasion, though, the residents there had to worry about floods. Santong is a flood-prone area. Back then, flood control measures and levees had not been constructed, so the village experienced frequent flooding from the Damsui River. Residents got authorization to modify their homes in the Kindred village to accommodate an additional attic on the roof for shelter from floods and typhoons. This gave the homes here a unique style and look that helped contribute to uh, its eventual preservation. With all that being said, life for people in Santong village was not uncomfortable. These houses seem pretty large by today's standards, at least much larger than my old place in San Francisco. But at the same time, you have to remember that these were not regular troops, being Officers in the Air Force, they represented the privileged elite of Taiwanese society. The higher your rank and the larger your family, the larger the house you got from the government. They even split them into Class A, Class B, Class C, and Class D. Their privilege also meant that they got things that I don't think were available to the general public at the time. Like, for example, record players. I love this little exhibit on Taiwan's music scene on the time, based near Damsui. Being inside these homes, I felt transported to a different time. I am rem reminded of that one famous Taiwanese horror game that got banned in China, Devotion. The architecture and feel of a 50 to 70 style Taiwanese home is distinct. I really felt that whole atmosphere and loved every second of it. 
One of the preserved homes belonged to a general. His family photos are very nice here, and they all look extremely happy. I wonder what happened to his family. They probably immigrated to America as most of the elite Weishenra intended to do. Propaganda. When the Guomindan and his mainlander refugees retreated to Taiwan, people expected the retreat to be temporary. No one expected the current situation to last for so long. President Chiang Kai-shek's propaganda messaging never deviated from retaking the mainland. Many examples of that propaganda are scattered across the area, and it almost feels like the fossil of a spirit that no longer exists among the people of Taiwan. The antipathy for the People's Republic is obvious. People would gather at the local temple to watch puppet shows and dramas, and there are two propaganda slogans on these puppet shows stand. The one on the left says, Defeat Mao, as in defeating Mao Zedong. The slogan printed on a wall near the village entrance reads, In the first year, prepare. In the second year, retaliate. In the third year, eliminate. Fifth year, success. I wonder what the fourth year is for. Gap year, I suppose. Since relations between the Taiwanese and Chinese governments are a lot friendlier nowadays, as compared to back when they were literally shelling each other on a daily basis, you don't see government-sponsored messaging like this anymore in today's public spaces. I'm very glad that they preserved it, for the people today to see and experience. During the 1950s and 60s, the Guomindang government attempted to build a cult of personality around Chiang Kai-shek much in the same way as the People's Republic successfully did around Mao Zedong. Chiang's imagery continues to appear in structures today, but I would say few households still have his face on a placard mounted on the wall like this one does. Conclusion All in all, I really enjoyed visiting this little village and experiencing the slice of life from a different time. Taiwan has changed greatly from those years. If you would like to visit this park yourself, you can visit it in Santong, a few minutes away from Taipei Bridge MRT Station on the Orange Line. Thank you very much.